Hi, I'm Denshi, and today I'm talking about the GNOME desktop environment, and me being a KDE user, and my perspective on it. I decided to use GNOME for the last week, and these are my thoughts. So first of all, if you don't know what GNOME is, it's a desktop environment for, you know, Linux and I think BSD as well, operating systems. And this is just the activities page in GNOME, so the main application launcher and quite possibly the most recognizable thing from the GNOME, you know, these rows and rows of apps that you find in GNOME 3. Just some considerations before beginning, GNOME is marketed to all users. This might seem like a no-brainer, but some, you know, window managers, for example, like DWM, are very clearly pointed towards certain groups of users. In its case, groups of users who wish to recompile their, you know, window manager every time they want to make a change, which, you know, that's a existing market. That's a group of people who want to do that. That's really, really cool. That's all good. But GNOME is marketed at all users, which is, you know, sort of an indication of where it's coming for or you know where it's coming from in terms of its design decisions it wants to be useful for professionals and for people who don't know how to use computers so that's something to take into consideration and it's a very non-traditional ui so if you go back it looks non-traditional it might look like a mac with this application launcher and that is similar to a mac's launcher so mac os's launcher and the dock as well but that's not a dock that only shows up when you press the super key or go to the activities page. When you're just using GNOME normally, the only UI elements on the screen are your windows and the top bar. So all of this stuff, all of these apps, all this, you know, the wallpaper is darkened, but you know, it would just be the wallpaper. All of that stuff's gone. It's a very quote unquote minimalist, you know, desktop environment. And it's very non-traditional in the sense that there's no dock or like panel or that kind of stuff for launching programs. You have to press the super key, then search for the program you want, or you click on show applications and this Mac looking menu shows up. So it has a very non-traditional UI. It's controversial for being minimalist. I wouldn't call GNOME controversial, just that, you know, people don't like it for various reasons. And one of those is for its attempts in minimalism. Now, GNOME has always been plagued by problems in terms of performance, but I'm talking more about the interface itself. And as you can see, the interface here looks pretty minimalist and clean. But what people have been complaining is that features are being removed from GNOME, and I'll talk about some of those later. One that really infuriated me, I'll talk about that, uh, that have been removed for no apparent reason, just simply because the people who make GNOME thought they were quote-unquote bloat or something like that. Anyway, it also uses GTK and Wayland. And oh god, Wayland. So GTK is the GIMP toolkit, or I think it's called the GNOME toolkit now. I don't know, it's something toolkit. I think it's GIMP toolkit. And all GTK is, is essentially the, well, you know, the API for developing the UI of the programs that are meant to run on GNOME. And I'll talk about what I like about GTK later. But let's first of all touch on Wayland. Oh boy, thoughts on Wayland. This is the first time I'm using Wayland, and I used it for like two seconds, then I switched to Xorg. Wayland is great. I think it's really, really excellent because it can run a lot of programs really well. It uses less memory, less resources. It is just generally excellent in terms of performance. And on lower end machines, you will see the difference. You will genuinely see a big difference when it comes to running on Wayland. It's, it, you can really notice this performance improvement, I gotta say. And I did notice it as well, because just running with Wayland, I used considerably less memory and less CPU than I would when I was running Xorg, which is sort of a weird thing, but we we're gonna talk about GNOME's resource usage later. But the thing is, obviously with Wayland, you can't use dedicated GPUs, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't run certain Xorg apps, I don't even think DXVK works, and all that kind of stuff you can't do that on Wayland. So I just ended up switching the little config in GDM to Xorg. And we'll talk about GDM, but first of all, what I liked, GTK. One of the greatest things about GNOME is that it has a very uniform design. This is because of GTK. And I really, really love GTK, especially when it's, you know, integrated directly into the operating system in terms of the interface. Everything in GNOME looks very uniform and I really, really like that. So this is an example of like a, a test of a GTK uh, interface. And as you can see, every UI element in the world is being used here. And it looks really, really good. Even with all this mess on the screen, it looks really good. I don't think I can say the same for Qt or Qt, which is what KDE uses. So I really like 
GTK. And I like the theming in GTK. It, it has, you know, had some issues with distributions theming their stuff and there was that, that whole thing, but I don't think it's as big of a problem now. I just stick to the regular dark theme that's included, a Dwight a dark. But I really like GTK, so I do enjoy GTK. Another thing I liked is the GNOME app. So once again, the uniformity of them. Things like, you know, weather, uh, maps, GNOME's like image preview, GNOME's PDF viewer. I like these because unlike KDE, they were named appropriately. They had you know, no nonsense names. Uh, and most importantly, they worked really, really well. They were fast. They were, you know, generally, they had a lot of features. The PDF reader had pretty much all the features you'd expect for like annotations and all that kind of stuff. And it's, they're just generally really good programs. And over here, you'll notice that I have the square at the bottom right corner. And that's with, uh, you know, it, uh, GNOME has Google and, you know, Cloud Drive integration in it, in its file manager. So a GNOME app, the, you know, Nautilus file manager has integration with that stuff by default. I don't use Google Drive. I don't use Nextcloud. I use Mega, which has a program for Dolphin as well, which is the KDE, so the K desktop environment file manager. But, you know, if you do use Google Drive, I guess that could be useful for you. And Gnome's pretty much the only one that I've seen that has that kind of feature where you can access your Google Drive from your, you know, folders. So anyway, what I liked as well, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about that I liked, activities. I know people don't find it confusing, the concept of, at, at first, I found it confusing as well. I press the super key and it brings me to this menu and it's got these windows all over the screen. Oh my god, I don't know what to do now. How do I switch workplaces? What's the hotkey for this? And it all ended up being very intuitive once you think about it with using the mouse and then, you know, learn the actual hotkeys. And I think the activities thing is really smart. The fact that you press the super key and all your windows spread apart and you can see what you're doing. Because I tend to do that thing where I overlap a lot of windows like a complete idiot without, you know, going to new workspaces. And this is a solution to that problem. Sure, I should probably fix the root problem, but hey, I really liked activities and its implementation and I think it's something that other desktop environments need to look into because I think it's really genius. What I disliked. Low. Now, GNOME is known for being a resource hawk, and in the past it was also plagued with instability issues, but it genuinely is bloated. It uses more memory and more CPU and pretty much more everything. This isn't an actual screenshot, this is just to illustrate my point. But basically, it is generally more bloated. Now, I'm gonna be honest, if you have any kind of modern like computer, like anything released in the last three years that has a decent CPU and you know a good amount of RAM, you're not really going to notice this. You're not going to notice the difference between GNOME and KDE, KDE, and likely you're not going to notice any actual slowdown. But, you know, it's good to have more memory and more CPU available. And obviously, compared to something like I was running OpenBox the other day, it uses far less memory because it's just a window manager. What I disliked, minimalism, quote unquote. Now, I mentioned this before, GNOME is controversial for being, quote unquote, minimalist. Now, by minimalist, I mean it gets rid of a lot of features. So, for example, desktop icons aren't a thing in GNOME. And that's, once again, an example of it not being a very traditional desktop environment. And the thing is, you can add these back, and I'll touch upon that later. But it's really annoying to see developers take things out which people actually like, thinking it's going to, you know, reduce bloat or something, when people need that feature. They might think it's, you know, bloat, but it's not bloat, it's a feature. Anyway, if I wanted to fix this issue of the desktop icons, I'd have to get something called GNOME Tweaks, where I can then go to a website where I can get extensions and click a little thing, and then there's a browser plugin so I can directly add extensions on that stuff. KDE, KDE has a similar thing, uh, but basically my point is, I find it really, really annoying that I need to install a separate program, GNOME Tweaks, and a bunch of other stuff, like get specific extensions, just so I can get desktop icons back on my environment. Like, it's it's completely ridiculous that that's what I gotta do. It's just sort of com completely annoying, I think. And the developers of GNOME should at least understand the concept that, you know, maybe newcomers will want desktop icons if they've been using Windows or Mac. They have desktop icons on Windows and Mac, and your first instinct as a new user is, oh my god, I gotta get that feature back right now, so I'm gonna go and install GNOME Tweaks and blow it up my system. Oh my god, this plugin is unstable or something. I install the plugin and it doesn't work? 
because if it's a plugin that people want and it's you know a plugin and very clearly they have a reason for it not to be in the actual program and an example of that is that many plugins have issues running on GNOME. I don't know if it's just my own isolated cases but even something as basic as installing the this desktop icons function would break a lot maybe just arch I don't know but um, yeah and they will use it and then that will break and a new user will be very upset simply because this feature wasn't there in the first place so that's just something I don't like the minimalism and the fact that you need to go and get gnome tweaks so you can add things and even just change the theme you need gnome tweaks for that it's not in the default system settings as it is with KDE I think gnome is great but it's just not for me. So I've been, you know, ranting a bit about GNOME in the last three slides, uh, but you know, I lo have loads of positive stuff to say about it. I like GTK, I like the GNOME ecosystem and the activities and that kind of stuff. And you know, Wayland's okay. And in general, I think it's a desktop environment which I could, you know, feasibly migrate to eventually. For me, my biggest gripe is the lack of desktop icons. And also, I didn't mention this in this video you know, yet, but the lack of coloring folders, which yet again needs another plugin for. You need to add plugins and plugins and plugins just to get this basic functionality, which is already in KDE. And sure, you may call KDE overcomplicated and it's got all these UI things and right clicking on everything opens up menus and menus, but at least it doesn't try to remove things or hide things like in home. In KDE, you see a million settings because there are a million settings. In GNOME, sure, it's more uniform and beautiful, which I do like. It's sort of like a double-edged sword. It's minimalist on like a simply like eye candy perspective. It looks generally like beautiful, really. I think it's a very nice looking desktop environment because of its uniformity. But this causes problems in terms of how you manage your system. And you know, doing things like, oh, I want to change the theme to my GTK programs. I want to be dark mode. I have to go all the way over here and install GNOME tweaks. And GNOME software, which is the program that's running here, barely worked for me. I don't know if it's just like Arch Linux being annoying, but it would take considerably more time to install software from GNOME's inbuilt store than it would, you know, from the terminal. Not that I would ever really install any packages not by the terminal simply just to try out the GNOME ecosystem and yep GNOME's store marketplace whatever they call it it's not any good I don't recommend you use it as your package manager use your terminal or at most use Octopi which is very very good as a GUI package manager anyway so that's pretty much all I really had to say I hope you enjoyed this little presentation I hope you enjoyed this video on GNOME I've switched back to KDE now um, but you know, I enjoyed my time with GNOME, I enjoyed the kind of stuff that I discovered and it, it gave me a more nuanced look on both it and KDE. So now I have a different view on KDE. I might eventually do something like this for XFCE and maybe like a, a window manager like Openbox or something. But please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments and if you want, please subscribe and uh, goodbye.